Hi, my name is Todd Whitehead, and I'm a postdoc at the University of California, Berkeley, the School of Public Health. And I work on the Center for Integrative Research on Childhood Leukemia and the Environment. Uh, in the brief discussion today, I'd like to talk to you about contaminated dust in our homes and how it might affect children's health. I'm an environmental health scientist, and that means that I'm interested in how the environment affects our health. Um, when people think about the environment, they usually focus on the outdoor environment. But in fact, Americans spend most of their time indoors. Uh, and you can see from the pie chart here, the sections in orange refer to the time spent indoors uh, in a national survey of the general population of Americans. Um, and the largest section there is the time spent at home. Whereas the time spent outdoors in the environment, here in the green, is actually relatively small. Um, now young children, if I were to show you a, a plot like this for young children between the ages of one and four, you would see that they spent even more time at home, as much as 85%. Um, and although there are pollutants in the outdoor environment, there are also sources of chemicals in our homes. There are things like um, cigarettes, for example, generate a lot of chemicals, or pesticide use. Also, um, consumer goods and construction materials also have chemicals. Um, so all of these things are uh, important sources of chemicals that are, exist in the home and that children could be exposed to while they're in, at home. Uh, now, dust that's embedded deep within carpets or stuck on other household surfaces is one important reservoir of these chemicals in our homes. Um, young children are at particular risk of being exposed to chemicals through contact with dust because they spend a lot of time on the floor um, and they also have a lot of hand-to-mouth contact. Um, chemicals can enter the body of a young child in a couple of different ways. Uh, children can swallow dust that's on their hands or uh, that's attached to their food. And they can also um, come into contact with dust on their skin, and chemicals can actually um, be absorbed through the dermal layer. Um, <clears throat> there are many contaminants that can be found in dust in our homes. Uh, in our study, we've measured, uh, we've collected dust from over 500 California homes, and we've measured various persistent chemicals, including uh, flame retardants, uh, like polybrominated diphenyl ethers, which are used a lot in California. Uh, we've also measured, measured pesticides, things like uh, DDT. We've measured uh, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, which could be things like benzoapyrene. We've also measured polycyclic, polychlorinated biphenyls, excuse me, uh, metals like lead, and also uh, nicotine as a marker for cigarette smoking. Uh, on these images here, we have microscopic pictures of dust particles. And what you can see is that these really bright areas are actually little spots of flame retardant that are embedded within this chunk of plastic that's uh, on a dust particle. And when you look at the colored image on the bottom, you can actually see there are these blue blips where the, the flame retardant, bromine in this case, um, as, a, as a marker for uh, polybrominated diphenyl ether, BD209, are highlighted. Um, so those are some chemicals that we can actually see using a microscope in, in dust. Other studies have measured other, other chemicals in dust, things like uh, phthalates, dioxins, furans. Um, pretty much anything that's persistent will accumulate in dust, and you can measure it. Uh, people have also measured biological agents like dust mites or uh, bacterial endotoxin, and also physical agents like uh, radionucleotides. Um, now, the concern is that a lot of these things that you find in dust could potentially be harmful to children. Uh, so on the left side of the slide here, I have a list of um, health effects that have been associated with various chemicals, and the chemicals are listed across the top of the chart. So it goes PHs, which are polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, PCBs, polychlorinated biphenyls, PBDs, which are polybrominated diphenyl ethers, OCPs, which is an acronym I'm using for organochlorine pesticides, and lead. Um, now, a really um, well-known relationship between uh, indoor contaminant and children's health is lead and IQ deficits. Um, so there's a, a, a number of studies that have been published that indicate that children who have uh, higher blood lead levels tend to have uh, lower IQ levels. Um, and the primary source of lead in our homes is lead-based paint, which can deteriorate and uh, turn into a powder that we find in dust that's embedded in carpets or on windowsills. Um, so this is, a, again, a really well-known relationship, but you can see that these other chemicals 
also have check marks in that category. So they also can alter learning and growth and behavior. Um, and, and, and that's just uh, somewhat concerning. And you can see that some of these chemicals also have other effects. A lot of them interfere with uh, hormonal activity in, in a normal body. Um, some of them, you can see on the bottom, also increase cancer risk, not in children necessarily, but um, that's the reason why we're interested in measuring them in our study and, and with our center. Um, so again, there's a lot of chemicals uh, that we can find in dust, and there is some concern that they can cause negative and adverse uh, health effects for children that live uh, in our homes. Uh, so finally, I'd just like to acknowledge the funding agencies, NIEHS, uh, EPA, and NCI, the National Cancer Institute. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge my collaborators at the California Childhood Leukemia Study and the California Department of Toxic Substance Control. And I'd like to make a, a special note of acknowledging my collaborators from the California Department of Public Health, um, who were very helpful in, in doing the micro microscope work that I referenced earlier. Thanks a lot.